Good morning, everyone. This is Agnes broadcasting from London, wet London today. And we have Jay Williams for part two of our interview. We saw Jay a little while back and we had a good time. So I thought I'd get him back again. Hello, Jay. Hey, Agnes. It is depressing weather. We are both <laughs> in the UK. And um, it's a certain time of year where we all suffer the <laughs> Depression in the UK, and what happens is we love to moan as Brits. I've always found that we love to moan. Um, yeah. I try and avoid it. I try and avoid that negativity <laughs> as much as I can. But you can't help but <laughs> moan about the weather. It's just it's like part of your genes. I uh, know. I think that's what made me dress in grey today because I looked out and went, okay, there's that colour. I've got to wear that. <laughs> it's just a an echo. But yeah, you know what? Thank God that we do work from inside and it doesn't matter as much these days whether it's wet or sunny so we can still create good stuff and I try to tell myself that I need to change my language around it but there's only so many times you can look at the rain and say it's sunny it's exactly <laughs> it's gonna take a big collective consciousness shift amongst the uh amongst the Brits I think to um to really call that forth I think <laughs> so let's chat you and i had a little chat beforehand about patterns people's patterns and breaking patterns and patterns are what causes a lot of grief but they can be changed so i'm going to hand it over to you to see what you think about that yeah for sure so patterns are very interesting and um, what i found so i've been working quite a lot on myself over the last uh, nearly five years now in this space and if you're someone that's ever noticed that the same things just keep happening to you in life I don't know if you start a business and it keeps on failing or relationships that you're in just keep breaking down over and over and over again and one of the things that um, my coaches have taught me was around um, patterns and they're quite often the patterns we can't see ourselves um, mainly the root cause of them I found and uh, one big pattern for me and I'll share uh, this with you because I think this will really help illustrate the point um, now my, my parents are divorced that's kind of nothing new uh, a lot of uh, people out there have divorced parents mm. and um, people used to say to me hey did your parents divorce <coughs> ever affect you now my parents were three when um, they got divorced and I was like, no, 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 this didn't affect me. Uh, you know, I was very young, didn't know any better, can barely remember past like my fifth birthday, never mind my back towards uh -huh. my third birthday. And I used to think, oh yeah, it didn't affect me at all. Now, there was a pattern in my life where I had commitment issues uh, and I would get into long-term relationships. I'd be with a girl three and a half years, uh, and five years. And they used to say to me, hey Jay, um, are we ever going to get married? And I'd be like, no. Are we ever going to move in together? No, this is not <laughs> happening. And uh, what I didn't realize at the time was um, I had commitment issues. And there was this pattern that just kept on happening. And my big concern was that it's if I keep going this way, <laughs> I'm never going to stay with anyone. And I'm never going to be able to um, find the one I love and, and commit to her and get married to her and have children and, and have an amazing life. And mm. One of the things I picked up on it was going through like a very unique branding process was that um, when I was three years old and my parents got divorced, what happened was 10 years of pain, arguments, um, just crying my eyes out all the time, hoping arguing would stop. My dad turning up with a baseball bat trying to kill my stepdads, you know, mm. horrible, horrible times for me as a kid and what i realized was that the reason i had such commitment issues and these patterns kept on repeating themselves over and over again was because i was terrified that what had happened to my mom and dad would happen to me mm -hmm. and so what i was doing is living my parents life and not actually exploring the world and living my own life and that deprived me of something and the amazing thing about this is once I was able to become aware of it, once I was able to address it uh, by having those conversations with my parents and bringing it to light by vocalizing it, then um, 
I was able to move in with my new girlfriend, who I've been with five years now. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get past the five-year mark. Uh, we moved in after eight months, which was incredible for me. And um, you know, I wouldn't want to spend a day apart from her. She's on a course for a week now and um, just love being around her. So the lesson that I got out of that was that in life, there are patterns. Sometimes you can't see them, but the clues are there. Mm. And you've just got to become aware that normally that as a result of something that happened very early on in life for you. So yeah, patterns, very mm. interesting. So Jay, can I ask, with the you doing that with previous relationships and then you realise the pattern and where it came from, did you actually do any kind of anything processes go and see someone to break the pattern so that you could move in with your girlfriend no so um for me it was more the awareness that this was happening because i couldn't see it before yeah once it became uh, become very conscious i could see it and i was then able to move forward from there don't get me wrong um I still had fears around the commitment. It's not like the yeah. fear went away. Yeah. Because I had the awareness that, hey, this is how I've behaved all of these times in my life and look what it's got me. Now I'm going to make a conscious choice to actually commit to this person I really care about and move forward despite knowing that that's happened and potentially a little bit of fear as well that it could happen again. Mm. And the other thing that I'd say is, it doesn't go away. <laughs> it doesn't go away in the every now and then this ugly little gremlin on your shoulder pops up and um, says, are you sure you're doing the right thing? Maybe, you should. <laughs> Maybe you'll end up like your mum and dad and you just have to, no, no, I'm trying to find something to get. I've got a microphone here. So bang on the head, back down and, uh, and get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is. The awareness of the pattern is so, a big, big thing, isn't it? So um, there was another um, really good instance. I don't know whether you want to move into this or you want to explore patterns a little bit further, but um, there was another issue that I had with worthiness. Yep. I can explore that a little bit. That'll, that'll be fun. Yeah. And I know when I often share this, a lot of people resonate with this. Now, um, one of the big things I noticed was happening was um, throughout my life, again, a pattern, um, I had this long string of success. Uh, and I don't mean like making millions. I, I mean like winning awards in football or, you know, doing well in a job or um, in business achieving a certain result. But what I found is I always got to hear but I never got to hear. Yeah. You were never to, able to blow the roof off it. And I can never understand why that was. And one of the things I realized, um, I went and did a course called the Landmark Forum. Are you familiar with that? You must be familiar with that. I went and did a course called the Landmark Forum. And what it, what it basically taught me is that as human beings, we always give meaning to things. Mm. And I always say to people, have you ever received a text message and read it and thought it meant one thing and then you spoke to the person and they're like, no, don't be stupid. Don't yeah. Know. And then this whole thing over here. Yeah. So humans were great at giving things meaning. Now, what I was doing, um, I go back to when I was a child. When I was eight years old, um, I actually used to play football. And my dad used to watch. My dad is like my world. He would uh, come and watch me and cheer me on. And he'd give me feedback and coach and mentor me. And um, all I really wanted to do was like please my dad all of the time. And I remember we played like a, a cup final. And we lost 2-1 in this cup final. And I walked off the pitch. bit in a sock, lost. And my dad turned around and said, oh, you, you played rubbish today. Now, what I made that mean as an eight-year-old boy was, I am rubbish at everything in life. Yeah. My dad doesn't love me. Yeah. I'm not good enough. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do everything in my power 
to make my dad proud of me, to make myself feel good enough, to make my dad love me. And so what I did is, um, I always use this uh, example. When you break your right leg, what do you do? Lean on your left leg. So what I did is I created a series of um, strategies, if you like, to actually um, try and prove to my dad that I was worthy of his love and I was mm. good enough in my life. So uh, one of my strategies that I developed was this drive, this competitive nature where um, any topic that I got my head into or any activity I got into, I would work really hard. I would learn everything I could about that particular topic or that activity to become the best I would. And then what I do is I'd get an award. I go, yeah, I've got an award. Hey dad, look at me. I've got yeah. Are you yeah. proud of me? And because he didn't ever say, Oh, I love you or I'm proud of you. Mm. You did a great job. Guess what I do? I jump to the next thing and go, come on, learn and drive and uh, driven and like come on, learn, 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 get really good. I've got another award. Hey dad, look at me. Yeah. So I did this throughout my life and I realized that I spent 30 years of my life living my life in a way where I was trying to please my dad mm. instead of actually trying to please myself. Mm. So this whole level of just horrible worthiness issues yeah. pattern was affecting everything in my life. Even like, I'm sure it was probably affecting my relationships uh, mm. with friends, with family, with girlfriends. Um, um, it's an amazing thing when you can start to understand these patterns. And again, yeah. these, these don't go away. After. Yeah. Is your dad still alive? Yeah, yeah, my dad's yeah. still alive, yeah. Mm. Um, and you're going to ask me next how I dealt with this, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think this is a big issue for a lot of people, so I think it's great you're bringing it up. So the conversation went a little bit like this. Hey, Dad, look, I'm not dying and I don't have cancer, but I need to speak to you about something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm on this course and I was on the landmark forum course at the time. I'm on this course and um, one of the things I've realized is this huge thing which, uh, and it, it's been affecting all of my life uh, up until this day. And uh, I went on to explain to him what had happened mm. and he was like, don't be silly. I've always loved you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Why are you being so stupid? What are you being yes. for? And I was like, yeah, but dad, like, uh, I might say it, but I don't hear it mm, because I don't feel it. Yeah. Because I have this unconscious program that's been driving the last 30, well, not 30, it would have been 22 years of my life. Yeah. 22 years of my life that I have no control over. <laughs> yeah. And I've been doing all of these things without even really knowing it's happening. It's like on auto drive. So, um, had that conversation with my dad, they call it getting complete within landmark. Yeah. And, um, honestly, it was a game changer for me. Um, had a conversation about with my dad about what I wanted. Um, um, you know, every time I come off a call now, he rings me and he says, you know, how much he loves me. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing and I really mm. feel it. And it, it means so much to me. And I also wouldn't be able to receive appreciation, compliments, uh, that kind of thing. I struggled with that kind of thing, you know, like when people... You mean with other people, just people in general? Yeah, with other people. When, yeah. Like, for example, you know, I do training on my YouTube channel or, you know, I'd be... Um, do something good for someone, help someone. They'd uh, oh, say thank you. you know, I really mm. appreciate it. And I'd be, oh, don't be silly. It's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, because I discard it. Or someone who would say, oh, do you know you're really good at this? I'd be like, oh, not really. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm nothing special. Yeah. Because I had these huge worthiness issues. And yeah. And now I'm at a point where people say, you know, you're really good at it. I go, I am. I am really good at it. <laughs> 
thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's not coming from a yes anywhere. It's just that I can receive. The yeah. Content and um, that's worthy. brilliant. That's brilliant. What a big shift. Oh yeah, and it's made such a huge difference um, to the point where um, I always believed I was meant to be on stage of some kind. Like I always said, I was a born entertainer, uh, yeah. and that's why I went into DJ and and you know it kind of fit the role. And one of the things I always wanted to do is stand up on stage in front of people and inspire people, yeah, um, to make shifts in their lives and make a difference in the world. And um, honestly my worthiness issues would have never let me do that mm. um, and i stood up in front of 500 people in brisbane and did a talk i stood up in a few hundred in perth um you know i, I hold my own events now where people come to learn yeah and i don't even feel like <laughs> worried about them because i'm like i'm good i deserve to be here and um that's a huge shift, um, mm. not only from a, a business perspective, but also from a personal perspective. You feel great about yourself when you feel like you can embrace love and you can embrace other people and mm. not living in a world where you feel like you're trapped in this little cage yeah. <laughs> where you have really limiting beliefs that stop you doing from what you want to do. Because I guarantee there's people watching this video and they have things they want to achieve in life, you know, um, but their limitations, their beliefs, uh, as we call them, or their patterns are what are holding them back. Um, mm. If I was to make a recommendation, uh, and I don't know whether you'll embrace this or not, Agnes, uh, but go and look at Landmark Forum. <laughs> uh, because for okay. me and so many people that I've told about it, it's been life changing from okay. people who, um, one of my good friends, Dan, he had some issues with his dad again, mum and dad issues. It's normally dad issues, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he um, was always told that he was stupid. Yeah. You better, you better do something with your hands because you're stupid. And he took on that belief that that, that was his whole world. Mm. And so he had these patterns in his life where, guess what? He did everything with his hands yeah. and he became super good at making things, engineering things. And now he's got a very successful YouTube channel because he's done lots of things with his hands. Yeah. He did landmark for him and he realized um, that, wow, well, I'm not stupid. And actually, my dad telling me that I was stupid is probably the best thing that ever happened. He didn't mean it. He still loves me. And now he's doing amazing things. Other people have told about it. Have fallen in love with their husbands again, and fallen in, and, and able to love their children, and I, I just think that's remarkable work. Yeah, and I know for me yeah. it's been a big, a big, big impact on my life, and I um, highly recommend that you at least take mm. a look at it. Mm. Okay, always good to get a recommendation, especially if it's worked for someone. You know, I always think people should check out. Have you it's... read the love languages as well? I haven't. No. Oh wow. Who's that written by? Uh, Gary Chapman. A guy called no. Gary Chapman. No, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, brilliant, brilliant book. So um, this particular book, um, and it's I think it'll be really prominent to some of your listeners because yeah, it certainly helped me in my relationship. It's actually okay. quite difficult once you get into it. Yeah. It's all about this marriage counsellor that for... Um, he was a marriage counsellor for 40-odd years and he was looking through all these case studies of like asking like why why do people like how do people fit into individual buckets and he discovered that as human beings there are only really five love languages and light bulb is going to be going off in your head and other people's heads in a minute so he describes that we all have a language within us that we all prefer uh, and it fits into one of these five, whether this be in a relationship with uh, a member of your family, a relationship with husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, with your children. We all have this language. The first one is uh, physical touch. And not in a sexual way, um, but like, for example, my girlfriend is physical touch. And so I have to keep giving massages to her all the time. <laughs> and uh, Strong fingers. <laughs> and um, <laughs> thumbs. 
and um, but it can be touching on the shoulder or an ear or cuddles or you know that kind of thing physically yeah. she feels most love when I'm like cuddling her or you know I put my arm around her or hold a hand in public um, she feels the love then really feels the love um, the second one is gifts mm-hmm so um, some people love to receive gifts and they really appreciate gifts. I don't care if people buy me gifts. I really don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. And because it's not my love language. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and gifts is when you get someone a gift. It doesn't need to be a Ferrari or something. It could be like, um, I've got a pen here, a recyclable pen, a recycled pen. Now I'm all about the planet and this means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, if I was a gifts person, but if someone got me this and says, Oh, I seen this recycled pen and thought about you to yeah. know that they thought about me. Yeah. Moment makes me feel loved. Yeah. This is another one. And um, the third one is quality time. So what I mean by this is that you're going out for a meal and you're not both sat on your mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> Um, really important one or you know you're just spending time together you know it doesn't yeah. matter whether you just sat on the sofa or you're going out for a meal or, or you know just to walk out in the park just yeah other people feel loved when there's quality time the fourth one is acts of service and acts of service is uh, when people are uh, feel most loved when you do things for them like if you do the hoovering or you wash the dishes ah, okay um, or you, um, you know, you just do a nice act for them. You cut the grass and there's obviously lots of different examples around. Mm. And, um, give you a little insight here. My parents are divorced. My mum is quality time. Yeah. And my dad is acts of service. Now we normally love in the way we want to be loved. And what my dad would do was he would, work all day because he thought he's providing for the family you know yeah yeah the, the breadwinner for the family while mum was at home with the kids yeah um my mum had an affair because she wasn't getting quality tanks my dad was always working yeah and as a result she went and found it somewhere else yep That's a really good example of it the final one and this is me and you'll know why it's so important that my dad <laughs> says that he loves me now words of affirmation ah so yeah. i discovered that one time in my life my dad told me that he was proud of me and that was when i passed out of my military training and it meant the world to me that he'd done this now why was that mm. well because i had worthiness issues but the other side is that my language is words of affirmation mm. so, when i wash the dishes and that you know there's i think there's a running joke with guys where they always say oh you know guy bloody shuts the door and he, he wants to be patted on the head for it well done you've done a good job yeah yeah whatever it is right um but it's a genuine thing not all guys of course but i'm words of affirmation so yeah. you know if i cook the dinner vicky will say something like oh you know i really appreciate it thank you for doing that in a, in a sincere way yeah and she loves me in a way i want to be loved and guess what when she says that to me and I feel loved, he calls it the love tank. When my love tank's full, what do I do? I cook more dinners. <laughs> so if you want your man to cook more dinners and his words of affirmation or wash the dishes, tell me he's done a great job. Yes, yes. So, That's but, wonderful, those five things. I'm glad you shared those. It's brilliant. And the it other is. big thing, if, if your relationship isn't going the way you want it to, start to become a listener. Yeah. What we tend to do is we moan about the things that aren't happening in our lives. And that's a clue to what your partner's love language is. Yeah. You ever notice people say, oh, bloody hell, I do all the washing in this house. <laughs> or um, I always have to go and do the shopping or I'm more forever cleaning. Like it could be a clue that maybe that's the way they want to be loved. One day you clean the house for them and they go, oh my God, that takes so much off my to-do list on my mind. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Or, you know, um, you never get me anything. You never get me anything. Or you never spend any time with me. That's another yeah. one. You never spend any time with me. Quality time. Like, just listen for the clues. And when you start to notice these, yeah. it just test. Just test. 
So, yeah. And what you often find is people have a primary love language and a secondary love language and a little bit of the rest granted, mm. but you have these, the primary and the secondary one. Brilliant, brilliant book. And then I can honestly Fabulous. Say it. Sounds great. I will put the link down below because that sounds really, really good. But I think too, it's like tying this all back to worthiness. Like if you feel worthy of being given to, then you do attract more. It's the law of projection and the law of attraction in action. It's, it's so much like I look at my past relationships and I look at this one. I can see that in the beginning, I was like, oh, well, they don't do this and they don't do that in my 20s. So I didn't get much because I was constantly in this looking at what they're not giving, looking at what they're not giving, looking at what they're not giving. So I'm getting more of a photocopy of that. Now, when you practice gratitude and you practice all these things, you're just in a state of feeling worthy and deserving of your partner doing those things, then your partner does do more of those things. Whatever, in whichever category you're talking about, you do get a lot more when you feel worthy and deserving of being given to. It just, it's a, it's a magnet. Yeah, you do. And I, I always, <laughs> um, I always, uh, the word is not, I was about to say laugh. That's not the word. That's a terrible word. Uh, but people who, uh, for example, um, get cheated on. Yeah. Um, you are responsible for that a lot of the time. And that sounds really harsh and strange. Yeah, I agree. The computer screen go, no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> either this, these are that, or she's a this, or she's a yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when, if you've ever been cheated on in the past, what you tend to do is become really, um, what's the word? Um, conscious of that and so you start finding yourself picking up their phone when they go to the toilet or yeah. um, you know reading yeah. through their Facebook messages or and then what happens they, they they catch you out and then they get annoyed at you and then the trust is gone and they, they think to themselves oh well I might as well cheat anyway she thinks I'm cheating so I'm gonna yeah. go and cheat. he thinks I'm cheating so I'm gonna go and cheat anyway and guess yeah. what you get back into your life yeah. cheating yeah and, it's and just, because you get really controlling and you're your vibe of um, suspicion, your vibe of lack of trust goes out and it attracts that behavior. I agree. I've been cheated on quite a few times in the past, but I didn't understand too at that time that all that suspicion, fear of abandonment, fear of betrayal and all that stuff, which is very much in my family history as well with my mum and dad, like what you were talking about with your mum and dad, you see it, then you fear it, then you pull it in. And I do agree with you. We are responsible for people cheating on us because of, and I can see the big, big belief is I'm second best. If you believe you're second best, you're going to attract a third party. And if you don't feel good enough, you're going to attract a third party. If you're suspicious and you, and you keep doing all that stalking, I get, I get probably Ooh, at least 15 to 20 emails a week about people that have been stalking people's Facebooks, looking on their WhatsApp, looking on their Instagram, looking behind the scenes at stuff. That whole energy that they put out, you're going to get a photocopy of it because that is the vibrational match as Abraham Hicks talks about. If you're doing that activity and it's a focus-based universe, what you're focusing on is going to bring you evidence. So if you want a really good trusting relationship, you give full trust. If you want a, a, a really good relationship, you get into I'm first best and I'm loved and I'm wanted to attract that from another person because they're just a hologram. You're the one creating. So I do agree that you're responsible. Totally agree with you. Yeah, I mean... It's something really interesting, and I'm just going to be really honest here. You know, I've talked to other girls when I've been in a relationship, yeah? Yeah. And um, when I remember the, the horrible feeling of anxiety when my girlfriend used to pick up my phone, my yeah. ex-girlfriend used to pick up my yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, like, I'm going to get found out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah it was the worst thing in the world and you know i attracted all of that yeah, that yeah. Gone, right or that vibration if i was vibrating on that level because of that 
Uh, and whereas the amazing thing is I say to my girlfriend, I just leave it. Here's a good experiment. Just leave your phone. Like, cause I've got nothing to hide. I just yeah. leave my phone. I give it to my girlfriend. And there's such peace of mind. You know, yeah. Um, I can give her my phone. And I'm not worried about who's going to message me. You know, I share everything. I'm very transparent with her. Mm. And where I'm going with that is that, guess what? I have such a trusting relationship now. Mm. Um, I've attracted yes. that trust. Yep. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing because that feeling, I can't really describe it. Anyone who's ever done it will understand it. And it's the worst thing in the world. It really is. Yeah. Um, I yeah. just find too, like when you're in relationship, like I personally think my phone's my phone, my partner's phone is his phone and it's none of my business. I just know he's doing his thing. I'm doing mine. There's trust in the relationship. There's no need for me to go looking at anything because if you go looking, you're looking for something and you're, you're in suspicious mode. You're better off saying, I love myself. I'm wanted. I'm loved. And I'm, I'm first best and I'm secure. Work on that in that minute. If you're feeling any kind of stuff around it, and then you don't project that and blame your partner for it by, you know, trying to, no, that's not, it's undignified to the self to do that kind of behavior. It's undignified. It's not cool. And really, if you have trust, you don't need to be checking anything. No, it, it's so true. And um, I think a lot of people overlook the fact that that person who you're with in that relationship has chosen to be you out of all the billions yes. of people around the world. Yeah. And yes, and the billions of people around, exactly. Not just the country or the city, but billions of people around the world. They picked you. Exactly. And, and, and again, it comes down to perspective and language that people are using. They chose you, nobody yeah. else you and uh I, when i first got with my girlfriend oh, a few months into our relationship this is a whole new le a, a, a level of trust which i'm really proud of we went and sat in camden in london yeah and uh, we sat in a restaurant and um we sat there and my girlfriend turned around and says oh should we um should we point out who, who you'd fancy like each other which each other would fancy and i was like yeah okay and there's like hundreds of people screaming past and she's like oh no i think you'll fancy her and oh yeah she's got a nice butt or whatever and this, <laughs> and this, and this, and this, this whole thing and it's the most messed up thing ever but it's brilliant because not in that moment well yeah we look everybody looks but you know the person who I'm sat next to has chosen to be with and there's no insecurity mm. that, oh, like that guy that she just said was fit, he's just going to run off with him <laughs> next week. And they're probably a trap. Yeah. yeah, exactly uh, right. Exactly right. Wow. Yeah. That, it's so great. Oh, when you let go of distrust within yourself, your relationship is such a wonderful place to be when you let go of they're going to hurt me. What are they doing? Or, you know, that darting around with your little eyes looking for something. When you let go of all that and you just say, I'm going to practice this thing of trust and feeling and, and, and making that a decision because it is a decision that you make. I'm not going to go into all that crap that I've seen in my family because in my family there was a huge amount of distrust. I'm born in France. I reckon France is the biggest country of infidelity on the planet. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to have a few cultural issues as well as family issues around, you know, that stuff. It was like in everybody's relationships in my family, I could see this from a young age. I didn't quite understand what was going on. People swapping house keys so that this person can go and meet this person. <laughs> you know, I didn't get it. But as an adult, you just go, oh my God, no wonder I've attracted third parties. I've got a cultural, you know, how many generations worth of infidelity that have come down. Yeah. So, you know, but just because they did that doesn't mean I have to do that. Just because they lived like that with all the fears and all the, you know, arguments and dramas that were created by all this doesn't mean I have to. So it's funny when I step back into that world and I still see it happening, I go, wow, I'm really glad I don't subscribe to that anymore because I did and I got nailed 
well, I, I, you know, both sides, you know, I, I had my own issues around it and other people did it to me and, you know, yeah, don't want to be doing that kind of living in relationship at all. But you made a choice. And that, you make a and choice. I think that's yeah. such a big thing here is yeah. abandoning that you always have a choice. And I always say to people, when you wake up in the morning, what time do you wake up? Mm. They're like seven, eight. Did you choose to wake up at that time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast? Beer, toast, cereal. Did you choose that? Yeah. Do you spend your whole day choosing what to wear, how to have your hair, whether to brush your teeth, not brush your teeth, whether yeah. to shower, not shower, what jobs to work? So why not choose in this moment? to make a conscious choice to do something different, whether that be not to check the phone, whether that be um, to pay your partner a compliment in their love language, to listen to them, to you know watch a video, to get some advice, to get some support in, in what you're struggling with in your life, to choose your friends. Here's a big thing for me. Circle of influence. There's a guy called Jim Ron, and he says that yes. you're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And if you want to know what your future looks like, look at who you're spending the most time with. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that gets me, and I spend a lot of time in coffee shops, Tanya. You know, <laughs> yeah, you do when you work yeah. alone. <laughs> people, and I just listen to conversations Whoa. that people have. I'm really nosy, but I'm always just really interested in people, <laughs> yeah. and psychology, and behavior. And I hear friends giving other friends advice about, so we've got a friend over here that's having a terrible time in their relationship and they go and speak to friend B who's also having a terrible time in their relationship and they give each other advice. <laughs> like, you should not be giving each other advice. I know. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. If you want good relationship advice, go to someone who's got a trusting, loving relationship, not another person, like you say, that's just not happening. It's like you wouldn't go, like a personal trainer is a great example of this. Are you going to go with this 25 stone personal trainer or are you going to go with the guy or girl who's absolutely ripped for the six pack, you yeah. know? Exactly. <laughs> which one you're going to get advice from exactly <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it just makes me laugh because people uh, don't see it and you know you say oh i need support uh, in this issue that i'm having i'm gonna ask my friends mm. but how good is your circle because that circle might not be good enough to support yeah. what you need exactly um, they might give you the um uh, because friends always do this for rocks at the enemies um He's yeah. an ass. Yeah. This. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of him. Uh, you don't need him in your life. You're a free, independent woman or man or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Time to yeah. move on. Get back on the horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which friend actually says to you, hmm, so how have you contributed to this being in front of you? No one ever asks you that. Yeah. That would be a good friend who says, well, what are you doing that you are actually in the middle of that? Hmm. That would be a good question to answer. <laughs> like, yeah, I, um, yeah. I, I met her with some friends a few weeks ago and uh, we were out just having a few drinks and uh, one of the guys was talking about his relationships and this and that and I just turned around and says, you're responsible for it though. You realise that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did and he his say? Face is just like a picture. Oh. Like, no. What do you mean? I am responsible everything that's showing up in your life you're responsible for and, and like he can't believe that i'm speaking to him like this and i'm like so you've got a choice yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can either take responsibility for the way your life yeah. is right now, the way you're showing up in your life um uh, and make a choice to actually do something about it. Or you can sit there and moan all day, like you moan about the British weather, that it's always raining. <laughs> or you can move to Australia where it's really sunny and do something about it. Exactly. You know, it's, yeah. you're responsible for everything. And yeah. the big thing here, Agnes, is that those closest to you, to you suck at mentorship. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. They do because yeah. they're too afraid that they might hurt your feelings yeah. or you know, that you won't be friends with them or, you mm. know, whatever it is. So 
this is why I'm such a big believer in mentorship and coaching. Yeah. Getting the right help that you need because yeah. what has got you to where you are now mm. isn't going to get you to where you want to be. And that's just yeah. a fact of life. Yeah. If it was, you'd already be there. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's very rare to get some good friends that can actually... I've got two friends that I really highly... Because they do a lot of this work too. So we don't let each other get away with stuff and we keep we do those kind of questions. Like, you're 100% responsible. What are you doing? We have those kind of conversations. and But it is rare. So, yes, that's why people go to coaches. That's why people go to mentors. And that's why people go and... Well, usually go to somebody that's got what they want to get the right advice because that person's already got the mindset that's needed to create or attract that desired end result. So for sure. Oh, beautiful. Hey, before I forget. Ah, yeah. Give me tap. I love it. I got one for me and one for my partner and they keep stuff really cold. So I really love the water bottles. Love ah, them. good. I'm glad you got one. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, they I, came um, in the mail. I was like, woohoo! There's, um, I don't know whether you're, you've had a chance to watch it, but there's a documentary called, I think it's Drowning in Plastic here in the UK. No. And, um, it should be on, I think it's BBC iPlayer, so you should be able to get it on there. Okay. Uh, fantastic documentary just about, um, the volume of plastic going into the oceans, what it's doing to animals um, and yeah. how people are actually trying to change it. But the sad reality is, is we just can't work fast enough. Yeah. And um, unless as a, as a global community, mm. uh, something is done about it, then the sad reality is yeah. generations to come, people are going to look back at our mm. generation and say that's the generation that ruined it for all of us that ruined it for all of us yeah and, uh, great documentary i highly mm. recommend it. okay it's, it's all about the plastic thing as you know the plastic thing yeah time. yeah and um uh, yeah worth a watch yeah yeah so i'm glad you mentioned them in the last interview because yeah. um, they're water bottles. And what I like too is the, the, the top of the water bottle is not really small. So when you try and pour something in, it actually doesn't spill everywhere. That's one of the <laughs> first water bottles I've ever noticed that does has a big head on it. So it's yeah. much easier. Ah, oh, wicked. I like the different colours. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought if I get two the same, we won't know, you know, my partner and I won't know whose is who. So I thought I'll buy two different colours and, um, and we have our own water bottle. Very happy. Love it. Very happy. Fantastic. Now... I want to, um, you and I talked a little bit, bit about what you're doing in your meaningful work to help others because you, you know, have said many times to me that you're driven by helping and it's one of the things that you really get inspired by in life is helping other people and you've, and you've threaded that through your business. So can you share a little bit about where you're up to and what your little projects are at the moment so people can know what how your meaningful work is continuing on yeah so one of the patterns i like that one patterns i notice is that over the last five years in particular since being in this um marketing space personal growth is that a lot of people have said to me um through my youtube channel through uh, seminars I've held through coaching they said you know you're really good at training mm. uh, you know you're really easy to understand yep and simple uh, I know you've got a lot from yep. <laughs> work, which is great yeah um, you, know, you should be teaching you should be teaching and I kind of like haven't listened to the call for quite some period of time just been like oh yeah yeah I just do these videos and do this thing and, and yeah teaching that's not what I need it's not what I'm doing. I need to be doing this. I need to be selling this product and building this. And um, there's kind of been quite a refusal to the call to train. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, I want to be out there getting results. I yeah. wanted to be out there, you know, proving I can do this stuff before I'm in a position to actually coach and mentor people and train people. Um, because I be- I'm a big believer in practicing what I preach. 
and um, I don't like teaching people stuff that I haven't already tried myself and I've mm. got to work. So it's really important for me from an authenticity point of view that I have that. Yeah. And so um, with this training, I was like, okay, I, I can have a big impact in a world. I know that. Um, but who are the people that I really want to work with that um, I can help in that? And one of the common patterns <laughs> that I keep seeing is that I'm really aligned with people who um, have meaningful work mm. and, and people uh, like Agnes, uh, relationship coaches, life coaches, confidence coaches, communications coaches, and the type of people who are really transforming people's lives and helping people to live a life that they love through their relationships, through their careers, through having the confidence to uh, stand up to their mum or their dad, mm. or whatever it might mm. be. So I was kind of like, okay, training, fantastic. Got results, fantastic. Awesome people that I align with, like the sound of that. And um, how can I serve these people? So I'm now moving in a direction of um, helping uh, coaches to get more clients and to impact more people through mm. spreading their message. Because I realize that. Um, as coaches, you are creative and yeah. uh, you want to focus on what you do best, which is coaching, you know, and working with great people uh, mm. and helping them transform their lives. And for a lot of coaches, the first part is not, hey, I need to figure out how to do a Facebook ad or I need to know how this piece is together or that bit or, or, you know, YouTube videos. And so the direction that I'm now moving in uh, to pursue that work is to, uh, work with coaching and some might already work with one-to-one -to, -one to help build a system that yep. allows them to generate more clients and a lot of the old way of doing things the things that you get told when you're maybe on a coaching course or yep. you read in a Facebook group uh, are simply outdated and mm. most of the time it takes up all of you even more of your time that yeah. you don't get paid for which is what I'm trying to help people avoid because what happens then is when you have more time, you can work with your clients more. And mm. if you have a system, you can then scale that to uh, impact more lives and spread your message to not only people who are paying you, but to people who yep. maybe can't afford you and can make a difference. We had a great conversation before this about yeah. that. How yeah. Your YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, they're solely designed to give to the world and um, mm. that in itself is an incredible thing so that's what I'm working on mm. that's what I'm super excited about and yeah, uh, lovely yeah looking forward to it well you were the first one I was such a green shoot I had no idea about anything about anything really and I met you I can't even remember if I met you online or in person first. I think I met you online first. And so, then, yeah. yeah. And then I met you when we were doing the marketing course, the, the marketing organization we both belong to and we met in person. But I remember thinking, wow, this guy does make things really simple. And I have got, like I was a hands-on worker creatively doing displays in Westfield shopping centers. I had never used a computer for work since I was at like 22 when I worked in insurance and I ran out of there as fast as I could because I really didn't like that. So it's like I had no foundation at all. And you were, I do agree with people saying to you that you make things extremely simple. And I think it's that you're using basic English for basic things for people that don't understand. And that is what I think sets you apart from, you know, I follow a few techie people online but sometimes I go, oh man, I'm losing my will to live. I don't know what he's talking about. And I just log off. I can't, I just can't. It's got to be basic and it's got to be simple and it's got to be, you do this, you do that, you do that. And that's what's important and forget the rest and you do clear steps. So I think that that's one, that is one of your assets is your delivery. A big asset is one of is your delivery. And, you know, and I think what's great is when I look at your YouTube channel, it's it is simple. It's you've got very simple things on it. You've you your YouTube's are short and sweet and to the point. You're not waffling on about you know your title says this and you're talking about that for the first five six minutes. You <laughs> want to talk about yourself. Yeah. yeah. 
And, you know, we do see that a lot in our YouTube industry, people that, you know, just don't talk about what they said they're going to talk about. Yeah, it's no. manipulation. And it's in yeah, our- yeah. And, and you, or you get to it after, at the six minute mark and by then you kind of lost interest. So, yeah. I do no, it's have great. some longer videos, by the way. Uh, yeah, pure, now you do. Make yeah. sure that we are in detail about the actual topic because here's what I find a lot of the time. And, and yeah. Topic. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people teach, do this, do this, do this, which is great, but you also need context to that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I always try and do through a lot of my videos and through a lot of my trainings and how I help people is always give them context. So you yeah. notice I did it today when I uh, talked about patterns and then I talked about my family. My yeah. Family. I like to use real life stories. Yeah. You get you to understand why you need yes. to do this or you know why this is relevant. For uh, sure. I'll always give information that you need uh, and get you thinking in a certain way rather than just monkey see monkey do yeah because that never helped anyone i agree yeah i think storytelling is a really big part of relaying messages to ordinary people or everyday people in a very simple everyday way it is it is brilliant brilliant you know what i love is when you say a lot a lot a lot I love. I love, honestly, I love every time you say that. It's so <laughs> I, I do this a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back to Australia and people go, you've been over there too long. You can't, you're not even talking properly. I said, no, they talk properly. We actually don't talk properly over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to know how, um, how we didn't wear off on the Aussies. So there's I a know. in Australia. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I don't realize how broad the accent is in Australia until I come to, to back to London. I go, oh, okay, now I can hear what they hear, what you guys hear over there. I can hear it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, well, brilliant. You know, I think it's so great to hear about people that have good relationships because there are, there are many people that do have good relationships, but they're not in the drama and they don't need to talk about it much. But I do think, you know, you have a good relationship. I have a good relationship and people I think need to hear more about how it can be calm and it can be loving and it can be drama free and it can be peaceful and it can be about doing nice things every day or meeting up at the end of the day and enjoying each other. And you're not discussing the relationship all the time. You really don't. You just live in it, enjoy it, go to work, come back, look forward to seeing each other, move on to the next day. And it goes from day to day to day like that. That's how it can be. It does exist. For many of us, it really does. And um, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Yep. Um, what do you think the single biggest fact there is in the success of your relationship? Me really understanding that love isn't over there, it's here with me, and that it is not something to try and get from the other person, but it is something to give to the other person. Once I understood that and was able to remember it, because understanding it and remembering it are two different things, it's understanding it, then remembering it, and then actioning it. And coming from that place of, I want to spend quality time with you because I've got something to give to you, not because I'm needy and I'm feeling unloved and I need you to come back so that I can feel loved. That I think was one of the biggest things I understood. What about you? What do you think? So I think that a big part of my relationship and the success is having the ability to be me. Yeah. Um, Just having that trust that I can be me. Mm. Hide who I really am. Yeah. Yeah. because, you know, I'm with a girl that's so authentic, it's ridiculous. Nice, <laughs> uh, nice. And my biggest value, um, I have a list of 10 values, and my yep. value is authenticity. Uh, mm. No surprise that we get on so well. Uh, yeah. Having permission to be me in that relationship and do all the stupid things that I do, like the terrible dancing and the, <laughs> and the you know, the 
uh, don't tripping over a bag before we started chatting. You know, those are all the things that make me who I am. Yeah. Be able to embrace that and be comfortable in a, with someone else in being that. Yeah. Has allowed me to not only bring that to this relationship, but also to every relationship in my life. And that mm. is incredible in that I don't need to be three different personalities. One yeah. with my family, one with my friends, one with my girlfriend. It's all just one. Yeah. And that that has been incredible for my mm. I'm going to add number two. Yep. Communication. Yeah, yeah. Maria communication. Yeah. And me and my girlfriend had a thing the other day. Not, not a thing, a bad thing. It was a funny thing, actually. You know when you go to the cake aisle and the girlfriend stands by the cakes? Yeah. And says, hmm, these look nice. She's not clearly communicating, I want a cake. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> but what she actually says is, I'm stood next to the cakes and the cakes look nice. <laughs> now we we didn't get any cakes and I said, Okay, did you clearly communicate it? Let's get a cake. I want a cake. Yeah. And the answer's no. And yeah. we have this whole thing. But you, you, <laughs> you, you, you know me for five years. You know. And I'm like, but you didn't communicate clearly. Yeah. Yeah. We say to people, I'm part of a football team. Yeah. Time. Yeah. When you don't communicate your message clearly you confuse yeah. and you lose yeah yeah and you don't get what you want yeah so it's the same um i remember when i did landmark for him there's a lady and she's like oh well i'm i'm not getting i'm not getting enough intimacy i'm not getting enough sex in my life yeah and uh, the woman turned around and said um have you have you told him how many times a week specifically you want sex exactly uh, um, you know, how do you want it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. communicate that. Communicate. Hang on a minute, I'm in a relationship, so now I'm just going to read their mind exactly what they want. But it doesn't work like that. No. So unless you're communicating clearly on the things that upset you, the things that make you happy, the things that you want, the things that you don't want, and guess yeah. what? You're never going to get the things that no. really make you happy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true um, so that that's been a big big thing um, for us communication yeah. um that cake one's a really good one <laughs> because I, I i would have said the same as your girlfriend so it's good that you've said that out loud you know because i i just say to my partner i need a treat now i need a treat now and it's like i go and <laughs> i gotta go and buy like a cupcake or something but yeah, yeah saying oh the cakes look nice i can i can imagine that she just wanted one and I can imagine. So it's funny hearing you say that cause I wouldn't have picked that one up either. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's exactly the same though as the love languages. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, um, people who say, Oh, I'm, I'm always, um, I do all the cleaning in this house. Yeah. That isn't clear communication. That's, Hey Jay, um, would you mind doing the cleaning of the house today? Yeah. Yeah. I do cleaning in the house. Yeah. You Which know, is a resentful statement in the beginning anyway. <laughs> it's probably a terrible example. To be <laughs> no, but it's true. But a lot of women do that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, we're not mind readers. We no, exactly. And, um, you, and you've got your mind on, you know, different things. People have their minds on different things. So yeah, you do have to, you know, there's a guy called Morty Lefko and him and his wife do beliefs work. And he did this Ted talk which was about the meaning we assign to things or the interpretation we give to things. And um, he gave an example where his wife, because she was working from home, she would have cups of tea and cups of coffee. By the end of the day, there was cups of tea in the bathroom, <laughs> in the office, in the kitchen, on the dining table, in the living room, because she'd move around while she was t talking to clients on the phone. And he would get really resentful about the cups of coffee because he had the thing, she expects me to clean all that up. And she didn't. But he assigned that meaning to it and then he would get annoyed by it. So it was a really interesting, simple example of how she does something, he interprets it, then he gets annoyed at her, but he doesn't tell her. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, it's so easy in relationship to do that stuff. So it's good that we've brought it up. Communication, yeah, big thing. Really, really important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, any last words, Mr. Williams? I like a, a lot. A lot. You have to use a um, lot if you do give some last words. And um, no, I, well, yes, I would say no, but yes. <laughs> uh, 
I think like the big takeaways from um, today to kind of put a bow on this is that uh, first of all, you're responsible for yeah. everything in your life. Um, and the second thing I say is you can make a conscious choice today to do something about it, mm. whether that's picking up the phone, whether that's seeking, sending an email, seeking advice, having a conversation with someone. Um, you have a choice today. And, it's, it, and it is black or white. Um, mm. the reason why we have yin and yang yeah it's black and white and as much as your emotion might be clouding whatever's happening in your life your career your relationship really it's simply down to choice yeah black or white yes yeah. or no pick yeah. up the phone don't pick up the phone send yeah. an email don't send an email and that's it yeah um, so, yeah, tell your partner that you want the cake or don't tell your partner that you want the oh, cake. Oh, you don't want the cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that one. I really love that example. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's so good to hear a bit more of the behind the scenes of you because we, you know, a lot of people that watch your channel know you as the techie guy or the guy that helps with marketing or this or that or YouTube. So it's, you know, there is, that's just one thing that you do. You've got a whole other, you know, you're like a 3d person. You're not just a person that does that and you've got a life and it was good to hear about your life past and present today. So thank you very much, Jay. It's always a pleasure to um, chat with you. And we're in the same time zone, so it's nice. Yeah. So it's easier to do. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I, I hope that anybody watching this has got some value from it. And yeah. feel free to tell us. Um, yeah, um, we'll put the links yeah. down below for all the stuff that, you know, Jay's stuff we'll put down below, some links to the stuff we talked about. And also some comments in the threads. I'm sure Jay will pop in and have Can a... I ask one thing of your view? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd love to know in the comments box below, what's the one thing that you've got out of this? Yeah. This, uh, this chapter. Good, good question. One thing that you got out of it and just put it in the comments box below. Beautiful. Good idea. Well, we're going to say goodbye and then we can say goodbye in private. So bye everyone. Hope you enjoyed our little chat today. Bye.